Hi, this is Jane Piper Clendenning. I'm a professor at Florida State University and I teach music theory. This lesson goes with AP Music Theory Unit 4 and the title is Scale Degree Triads and the Phrase Model. This lesson focuses on the transition from your fundamentals portion of your course, including concepts such as scale degree triads and seventh chords, to writing and analyzing basic musical phrases and tonal music. A phrase is a complete musical thought ending with a cadence or point of repose. Music is considered to be tonal when pitch classes in the music are organized around a central tonic pitch class and relate to that pitch class, the scale degree triad built above it and each other in a hierarchy. Hierarchy means that some pitch classes and chords are more important to establishing the key or tonality than others. This diagram is probably a familiar one to you. It's often used when you've just learned how to write scales and you're learning how to write triads. We have here a G major scale and written above each scale degree is the little snowman stacked up triad. The other symbols are probably very familiar by now, including the Roman numerals, the um, popular music symbols for the names of the chords, the scale degree names and other factors. When we look at a diagram like this one, it looks like all these chords are equally important, each one standing above its scale degree. But what we're going to find is that the chords, even though the chords stacked above the scale degrees may initially appear to be equal in strength and frequency of use, this is not the case. Some are used more frequently and in different places in a phrase than others. An individual harmony's function in the hierarchy depends on the scale degree the chord is built on, where it appears in a phrase, and whether it's in root position or inverted. Just two of these triads by themselves can establish the key of G major. Those are tonic and dominant. We refer to this sometimes as the tonic dominant axis, and it's a basic concept of tonal music. The dominant harmony resolving to the tonic makes the sense of G major. Adding a seventh to the dominant chord makes their relationship even clearer because the seventh creates a dissonance that must resolve. Here, it's an F sharp to a C, a diminished fifth, that resolves into a third. You've probably learned about this resolution when you learned about intervals in the fundamentals portion of the course. Folk songs can be harmonized with only two chords, going from tonic to dominant, TD, for a half cadence, or tonic dominant tonic for an authentic cadence. To make a strong cadence, you will learn to write the tonic and dominant harmonies in root position with the root in the lowest part or the lowest voice. The simplest form of the basic phrase model includes three functional areas representing what we were just talking about. The initial tonic area, which can be represented by a tonic chord, the cadential dominant area, D, which is represented by five or five seven, and you can simply stop there at the end of a phrase to make a half cadence, or the final tonic area where you can end on tonic for an authentic cadence. These progressions, one to five or five seven, one to five or five seven, then on to one, are the most foundational in the basic phrase model. All of the other tonal progressions are built from them. This progression from tonic to dominant to tonic, T, D, T, is the essence of the basic phrase model. But what about all these other chords? Some of them will be used between the initial tonic and the cadential dominant, creating a, creating a predominant area of the basic phrase. These are the supertonic, subdominant, and submediant chords. The complete basic phrase model has four functional areas, T, P, D for predominant, D, T. And here's a diagram showing which chords go in each one of those areas. Again, this is a fairly basic phrase, but a progression using this model is very common as the first phrase of 
a Mozart sonata, for example. The predominant area moves away from the initial tonic area and leads to the cadential dominant area. It may consist of only one of the predominant chords, two or four or six, or two or more of them in the order that's shown here on the slide, six to two, six to four, or four to two, or all three in descending thirds. Please note that they're not in the order that they are in the scale, where two would come before four and four would come before six in an ascending scale, but rather in a descending thirds ordering. Triads that share two pitches with the tonic or dominant triads may serve as tonic or dominant substitutes in specific progressions when a weaker tonic or dominant function is desirable. We'll be learning about these in a later unit, not unit four, but just to let you know, they do show up. The submediate triad can be a tonic substitute, and that's what makes the deceptive cadence. The uh, leading tone triad, or seventh chord, can substitute for a dominant at the beginning of a phrase where a strong dominant is not desirable. And we'll see some progressions shortly that do that function. One of these chords, the median, is rarely employed in tonal music outside of special circumstances, such as sequences or specific progressions, such as one to three to four. This median triad is very tempting to write because it has two notes that belong to the tonic triad, the B and the D in this case, and it has two notes that belong to the dominant triad. So when harmonizing a melody, it might seem like a good idea, but you should save it for these special circumstances and know that when you write a three chord in major key anyway, it's probably wrong. So choose either tonic or dominant instead. When you start learning to write harmonic progressions, you may start out with only tonic and dominant harmonies. So here's the plan with the initial tonic area, cadential dominant area, final tonic area. But we can do more with just these two chords than a simple folk progression though, because we can use one and five in inversion to expand the initial tonic area. For example, instead of just playing a root position tonic chord, we can move from root position one to one six. If you have a four measure phrase with a harmonic rhythm of one chord per measure, you can have one root position one, one six, either five or five seven and one and make a nice four measure phrase. We can also use an inverted five or five seven between two one chords or one and one six to make a passing or neighboring motion to expand tonic. For example, we could use one to five, six, five, first inversion, seventh chord, five, seven chord, to one, which makes a nice neighboring bass line. We could use one to five, six, four, to one, six, to make a nice passing bass line. You'll learn more about the six, four chords probably in a later unit, but it's one of the possibilities with just one and five. In this unit, you may learn about one, five, four, three, to one, six, using the second inversion seventh chord as a passing chord between one and one six, it again, makes a very nice contrapuntal bass line. These inverted dominant and tonic chords in the initial tonic area at the beginning of a phrase are not as strong as root position ones, and they don't make a cadence. So if you see a one going to a five and to a one, don't automatically assume it's a cadence. You need to consider also the placement in the phrase, and whether the chords are being used in reversion. These chords will sound like the beginning of a phrase, not an ending. These inverted dominants are sometimes called contrapuntal dominants to distinguish them from the strong dominants that make the cadence. Because they're inverted, they use passing or neighboring voice leading and parsimonious voice leading. Parsimonious is a fancy theory word meaning stepwise and common tones, very smooth voice leading. Because they use this very smooth voice leading, they don't have the motion that the cadential dominant to tonic will have, where usually you have a root position chord going to a root position chord with a leap in the bass. 
As you continue your studies of tonal harmony, you will build upon this basic phrase model foundation to include a variety of harmonic progressions. These include seventh chords other than 5-7, such as a 2-7, which is a common seventh chord. You may learn how to do secondary dominance, and eventually chromatic harmonies like the Neapolitan and augmented six chords, all of whom fit within this model. For the AP course, you won't be getting into those chromatic harmonies most likely unless you and your teacher want to explore them. They're usually studied in second year theory at college, but secondary dominance you will learn how to do, and they all fit within this basic idea. We can also use this phrase model concept in music analysis to help us know what to expect in various places in the phrase. In later units, you will learn how to include all the predominant harmonies as well, and more possible tonic, predominant, and dominant expansions. We are limited here to just the ones with one and five, because that's mainly what we're doing in unit four. Half cadences and authentic cadences with one and five and five seven will continue to be really important in these expanded versions of the basic phrase. Be sure to memorize the cadence voice leading as soon as possible. You will use those combinations a lot. Just to summarize, the chords stacked above scale degrees may initially appear to be equal in strength and frequency of use, but this is not the case. Some are used much more frequently and in different places in a phrase than others. An individual harmony's function in the hierarchy depends on which scale degree the chord is built upon, where it appears in a phrase, and whether it's in root position or inverted. In musical phrases, two of the scale degree chords, tonic and dominant, are the most strongest in the hierarchy of tonal music and make the cadence patterns that end most phrases. The cadences, or points of musical repose, are strongest when tonic and dominant are both in root position. Strongest of all with scale degrees two to one or seven to one in the highest sounding voice, along with the bass line with the roots of the chords. Inverted dominant chords may be used to expand the initial tonic area as contrapuntal dominance, but they do not make a cadence. The cadence only comes at the end of the phrase and at the point of musical repose. Thank you. I hope this is helpful for you as you're starting to think about writing one and five tonic and dominant chords, and as you're looking forward to analyzing and writing more kinds of basic phrases. We'll see you. Good luck with your AP studies.